Welcome to Playfully Orange, our conversations about arts and culture here in Central Florida. Today, my guest is Dean Jeff Moore. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Terry. It's great to be here. You have had a position at UCF for several decades now. <laughs> yes. And yeah, have... they broke, they broke uh, child hiring labor laws when they hired <laughs> me. Well, as well as your positions at UCF, you've been very involved in the community, UCF being a partnership um, university and have seen a lot of changes. But let's uh, learn a little bit about you to start with. Where did you grow up? Well, I, I grew up in San Jose, California. I was actually born in Detroit. And when I was eight, we moved to San Jose. So I think I've felt like I grew up mostly in San Jose, California. And, uh, and that was a, a wonderful time. And when I graduated high school, I went to Texas for my undergrad, Wisconsin for graduate school. And then right after graduate school, I got the job here at UCF. So this has been uh, where you've had your professional career. That's correct. I've I've been at, I've been in Orlando longer than any other place. And did you grow up in an arts family, a musical family? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, my father was interested in playing drums. Uh, I think that's where I got the bug to to be a drummer. Is uh, he was in the high school band, and uh, you know, sort of gave up music after he graduated high school. And when they said, you know, do you want to play an instrument? I said, sure. And they said, which instrument? And I said, well, dad played drums. So let's play drums, you know. So I, I think that's what led me into that. So it wasn't a, a, a musical family, but uh, there was a, a, a drumming influence there. And uh, that started in high school for you? Uh, for, for me, it started in elementary school. It's about sixth grade. I, I started taking private drum lessons and then joined the band in middle school. So middle school and high school, I was in the band, the jazz band, the musical theater orchestra. Uh, I just loved playing in all sorts of musical activities. And that's what was so great about playing percussion because I had a foot in classical and a foot in contemporary and rock and roll and, and jazz and all the other great uh, genres there are in, in music. And when did you realize this is what I wanna do for my life? Oh, I think it's when I was a junior in high school, I really made the decision that I wanted to pursue music as my major at university. And my parents were very concerned at first, <laughs> thinking that I wasn't going to have a, a job prospect there after graduation. And I explained that, you know, there, there were jobs for me. And when I went to audition, uh, I had great counsel and mentors uh, as the professors and I majored in music education as an undergraduate, so I would make sure that I had a teaching credential and could earn a living uh, following my uh, graduation from university. My parents were pretty set on me going to a university and not a conservatory because they said, you really need to have that balanced education from their perspective anyway, uh, that I could get the music training that I wanted, but I also had to have that degree that, that hopefully qualified me for uh, other positions. And uh, they were right. And UCF, grabbed you right out of graduate school. That's correct. Yeah, I graduated uh, uh, from the University of Wisconsin. And uh, a year later, there was the opening at UCF. And I came down and interviewed and auditioned. And, and they offered me for the job. They offered me the job. And uh, I started in the fall of 1994. So 27 years. Well, when you moved to Central Florida in 94, what was your impression of Central Florida's arts and culture scene? Wow. Well, that's that's a great question because, you know, the, the University of Central Florida at that time was about 24,000 students and it was largely a commuter campus. And I think the art scene in Central Florida, I had still equated that strongly with the theme parks and said, OK, whatever's happening at the theme parks, that's what's happening in Central Florida and the art scene. And it really did take me a little while, about a year and a half to sort of get my footing in. I ended up playing with the orchestra, the Orlando Philharmonic, which is was just a couple of years old then and uh, played extra percussion for them when they needed an extra percussionist. And, and through that, I developed friendships with other folks who were involved in the arts in Central Florida. Of course, the Orlando Shakespeare Theater was uh, had a strong connection with UCF, so I was well aware of them. Back then, we were doing performances at Lake Eola outside, and several of my students would participate, and I would participate in designing uh, sound effects and other sort of musical support. Uh, Dr. Keith Coons, who's our clarinet professor, was head of the 
early music ensemble. They originally supplied music uh, for those outdoor Shakespeare theater performances. So it's sort of like one thing led to another through the Philharmonic. I, I discovered the Shakespeare theater through the Shakespeare theater. I discovered the rep and and things just continued uh, to snowball from there. And so now the the landscape in Orange County for the arts groups, maybe it was always here and I just discovered it myself as I went through all of these uh, phases. But I, I really do believe it's really had uh, a, a burst here in the last uh, 15 years in particular. And all of the support from the county and from the city and supporting the arts groups here helps to build a sustainable model. And that's what was so exciting. I think that's what I didn't see in 1994 was this sort of sustainable model. There was a lot of entrepreneurship involving in the arts and and now it's 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 uh, still a lot of innovation, but there are folks who are really um, uh, trying to and have built a great community of support. Yes, I I've, I've often said that in the theater realm, there's there's three things that have let our community blossom: um, the theme parks, which bring people here, uh, UCF, which has the largest theater department in the state, and the Fringe Festival, which let people know you don't have to wait for somebody else to produce it. You can do it yourself. Sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That's that's exactly right. There's a lot of engines here. And 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 that's what the arts need is, you know, they need people to foster and care about them and help them. People have a lot of ambition, a lot of ideas, but those ideas, pushing those ideas forward into a uh uh a sustainable model, a sustainable company, a sustainable organization, that takes a village. And uh, Orange County is very lucky to have uh, the support and all of the people in it that help support those uh, those organizations. Yeah, I think we can begin to add Orange County government as a fourth thing there because, um, well, as a recent study showed, we have a higher percentage of government support for the arts than most communities. And um, that has developed over the last couple of decades and um, is paying off. So, yeah. I agree with that. Orange County government, uh, it's not just been financially supportive, but again, in connecting people. It's been so wonderful. Your work personally, Terry, I've always admired what you've been able to do for uh, the county and the city. And, and I feel myself fortunate to be uh, working with you and in, 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 in the advisory committee and, and all of the other activities that we engage in. So I, I think you're right. They, there's different engines here that happened in, to help the arts. And the theme parks are definitely one of them. UCF, the Orange County government, uh, you know, being able to get those tourist, tourist uh, uh, tax dollar support has made all the difference for people living here and having a great arts experience while they live here. Yes. When you look at where we're at now, what are we still missing? Oh, well, I, I I wouldn't say that we're missing. I think we could enhance what we're doing. You know, I would love to see more opera. I would love to see more ballet. I would love to see more classical music and, and jazz. You know, uh, one of the things, there's just little gems that you find all over Central Florida. And one of those gems is uh, uh, the Timaqua Arts. And uh, th that that venue, you know, that Benoit Glazer has put together, really attracts a, a wide variety of sort of uh, um, small uh, art uh, art forms. I mean, they, I, I, I want to call them small art forms. Just uh, starting out uh, artists and um, emerging artists. And they get this platform, they get this venue, and we in Central Florida get access to all of this great performance, I would love to see venues like that pop up. I, I you know, again, it's not um, lacking. It's just we could have even more. And I think people, this is very exciting with the uh, incubator that's going in downtown now that the fringe is uh, are running, you know, the space there. These are, these are things to help bring new artists, emerging artists out. And I would love to see little venues for that, 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 that happen. You know, some of some of the bigger cities, you, you know, if you dream big, you think about New York and Los Angeles, uh, they just have these, you know, sort of underground or, or, or different networks of venues in addition to their beautiful world-class venues that 
we also have here in Central Florida. I would like right. to see more of those things. Yes, uh, the uh, theater critic Harold Clerman said about theater, you need to have a great quantity of theater if you want to have a great quality theater. We need to have lots of things going on exactly. for some things to really get to that most excellent point. Yes, I agree with that. And I, you know, I, I recently visited uh, the state of Louisiana and I was surprised to find out that they have one uh, equity theater in the state of Louisiana, one, and that's in Baton Rouge. And it's the Swine Palace Theater, which is affiliated with uh, the uh, Louisiana State University. And I, th I thought, what a gift that I live in Central Florida, where there are many, many equity theaters just within driving distance from my home, and certainly not just a single one in the state. And so when you think about all of that quantity that's happening, as you mentioned in the quote, the quality is going to happen as well. So I think that's very important. And I think it reflects the investment that the, the county is and, and, the, and, the, and the state make in the arts. Great. Well, Jeff, it's great talking to you. Thank you for joining me today. I also want to thank those watching this issue of Playfully Orange, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.